So as I load this last bit of camera gear in the boat, it reminds me of a video I did last year on just how much gear this rig will hold. You know, the hull on an aluminum boat is thinner and the decks are higher. So it creates this cavernous kind of storage inside that's really hard to fill. Hey folks, Chris Hockley here, Proud Lund Pro Staffer. And today I wanna to talk about how to manage a veritable loading tackle shop. You're gonna need a system to make sure that it's organized and you're able to find everything when you need it. Let's get to it. Now right beside the driver is a nice little storage area where you can throw things. So in this area, I generally keep some scissors, my remote control for the Ultrex up front, my phone up in the cup holder here, but it's very, very easy to get lazy and start throwing lures and whatever in there to, and it messes it up. So what I've done is I've actually gone and just purchased a, a nice thin storage container. This one's the uh, Betty Crocker edition. <laughs> and I just keep odds and ends in here, stuff that I store just keeps you from throwing your tackle in there and it getting messy, getting a hook in your finger, or from it getting rusty. Now on the passenger side of the boat is more storage. And of course they can keep anything they want in here, but generally I'll keep paddles. And then also the posts for the cover in here. They're long, it's a long storage compartment that allow um, you to put those kind of things in. And again, readily accessible should you ever need them in the case of an emergency. So anybody who knows me knows that this could quite possibly be the most important compartment in the entire boat. <laughs> this uh, igloo cooler actually comes with the boat, pops out, so you can take it inside and make your lunch. But yeah, lunch and drinks. I find it's really nice. It's readily accessible, but it also keeps everything cool all day long. Now at my feet here is another step up to the rear deck. Uh, of course it has cup holders in it and you can keep whatever you like in it. I generally keep a garbage bag here. It's just in the middle of the boat, makes it very easy to throw your garbage into here and then remove it at the end of the day so you don't mess up your boat. The rear deck of the 1875 Pro V-Bass is so well laid out. There's two seats here that both flip up. That gives you seating, comfortable seating for four. But underneath that is storage and generally I'll keep my life jackets here. And on this side, I keep the covers for my hummingbirds, but also the rope that I use to launch, marker buoys, I'll keep bumper buoys, my safety equipment's also in here, fire extinguisher, my throw rope, and extra ropes just in case you ever need them. I also keep the marine safety kit in here. This is something that uh, I just have with me at all times. Just make sure that, that battery is always working in the flashlight. Now in the very rearmost portion of the boat, there's two more storage containers. On this side, we have the cranking battery, but also the pump for the Panther XPS. Now this is an incredible hydraulic end cable system that gives you automotive ease to steer. It's the first thing that I hear when people take over the boat at any point in time is, whoa, how come this is so easy? Well, that's why it's that Panther XPS. It allows you to dock it easier, allows you to take it off the trailer and maneuver around the docks easier and drive it all day long. It's great. And it's also the security knowing that because it is hydraulic and cable, you're never gonna have a complete breakdown should the worst ever happen. The port side container here is completely empty. And that's thanks to the talons in the back. I don't need to have extra pumps taking up space back here. This leaves this container open and ready for anybody who's in the boat with me to store their tackle, their lunch, or any of the other gear that they want. And when I'm by myself like today, I just throw in some extra camera gear. The glove box in a Lund is absolutely gigantic. Ooh, hello. In there, of course, I keep like everybody else, calling kit, weigh scale, glasses, extra sunscreen. I also keep a lot of toilet paper around just in case. I also keep stuff in watertight storage containers. This way, if I bring that out and accidentally leave it, I don't have to worry about it getting wet. My phone, my wallet, extra gloves, glasses, and all the like in here. So I did a video last year on how easy it is to remove the second console in this boat. It's great because at the drop of a hat, you can have an open concept boat 
or put it back in to protect the passenger that's with you. Just remember, if you take out the console, with it goes the glove box. I've done that a couple times myself, remembering that, oh, I left my sunscreen back in the console inside the truck. A great feature in this 1875 Pro V Bass are the giant storage containers up the front. On the port side, I keep all of my fishing tackle, and that's all of the things that I could possibly need throughout the day. I've got things in Plano trays, and I've got soft plastics in binders as well. I carry other bins just so that I can keep things readily accessible whenever I need them or want them. And then can easily be pulled in and out depending on what lake you're at as well. Because I do most of my rigging right here, I have two containers. One is literally labeled all the time that I have scents, dyes, clips, um, glue, anything that you may need just right here accessible. The other thing, because again, I fish a lot of plastics, I have a little binder here of eight or 10 different bags of, of product that I consistently use day in and day out that again, I don't want to be digging for, it's right here. And when I run out of something, I just simply reload it. So there's nothing in this bin that I can't get to instantly. Because we spend so much time up in the bow of the boat, I keep most of the gear in these small compartments that I want access to immediately throughout the day. Fishing line, leader material. Uh, I even have a set of jumper cables up here in the case of an emergency, should I need them or somebody else. Lund does an incredible job with these Pro V Bass. And one of the best features on them is that 96 inch beam in the back. The nice thing is that they keep this boat as wide as possible all the way up to the bow so that you don't feel cramped up in the front where you spend 90% of your time. You can see even now, I'm a big boy. I can stand as far forward and have this area. I could have another guy right beside me. That's an incredible thing for me. I like lots of room and I like things out of the way. So I always make sure when I pull my rods out and I have them on the deck, I move them back to leave myself this space. This is definitely fishing central. This is an attempt to keep things clean. In the bow of the boat, I typically will have a drink up the front and just a pair of pliers and some scissors here readily, readily available for me to use throughout the day. So the front storage container on the starboard side is another one that I use frequently. But these are very deep. So what I've done is actually gone out and purchased these small containers. They're color coded, they're labeled, it makes it very, very easy to pick out what you want grab what you need, and you have it right here at your feet all day long. The other thing that I keep in this container is a, a storage bin for tools. It's got everything from lip grips to markers to mark up your line, glue, scissors, tape measures, scales, um, hook sharpeners, everything you need, all right here in this one tool bag, right at your feet. In the last giant storage bin, because I have all of my tackle in the rest of the boat, I'm able to keep this completely free for all of my camera equipment. I keep that in this Nanook case here. I have my safe face helmet. And then of course some rain suits for both myself and anybody who's with me that uh, may or may not have brought one. The okay, last but certainly not least is the center rod storage. Now this is actually set up so that you have three levels of five rod tubes. I put two into each. Thanks to the rod gloves, I can slip them over the rods and the, the lines don't tangle. You don't damage the rods that you slide in and out. And it's just very easy to grab the one that you want. I might do a little frog fishing here. I'll lay that on the deck. And, uh, well, you can't go anywhere without a jig. Let's give that a try. Remember that this rod locker can take rods up to nine feet long. You notice I also keep those neoprene covers on the reels, and that's just to kind of keep from damaging them um, as they bang around in the rod locker in rough water. Just something that I've always done and just takes care of your expensive gear. These are great. These pop off. And again, I keep those cases and the covers in there and that way they're always ready to 
be slid back in and put away at the end of the day. I'll generally take these covers and just put them in the glove box. I have a good friend that used to joke that if he didn't have so much downtime, he'd catch way more fish. And the same thing holds true here. This rig holds so much gear, it can easily be lost, misplaced, or even forgotten about. You need to have a system in place to manage and organize your gear so that you can find it whenever you need it. That way you can minimize your downtime and maximize the number of fish that come in the boat. For more information on this boat or any of the other boats in the Lund lineup, I encourage you to check out lundboats.com. You'll find that they have a great website that'll get the answers to any of your questions. And for more information on pricing on this boat, I encourage you to check out dtpowersports.com. You'll find they have a great website and also excellent sales staff that can help you with any questions or pricing needs that you may have.